Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here. I hope you guys are too, because we are going to dive into some basics of Premiere Pro. The premierest of the pros, the premierest of the professionals. My name's Javier Mercedes. I like making video editing, video editing tutorials on the internet, mainly youtube.com. You can find me at Javier Mercedes on YouTube. And uh, let's just dive right into it. I will be monitoring the chat and I hope you guys enjoy the experience. This will be covering a basic level of Premiere Pro. If you want to check out the footage that I'm going to be using throughout the tutorial, I have put download links to that in the description. So afterwards, if you wanna try the things out for yourself, well, all the materials down there for you to do. Let me go ahead and switch you over to my desktop view and let's get started, yo. All right. Let me uh, just take a gander minute at the chat right here now that we're all caught up. Hey, Leela. Nice to see you. All right. Cool. Looks like we're all good and ready to go. Right here on my uh, desktop, I before I dive into Premiere Pro, I just want to go over to some basic folder structures that I use when creating projects that will help you out when uh, further down the line when it comes to organization and just knowing where all your footage is in general. So before I start a project, what I like to do is have a project template folder. And what that looks like is right here. I create, um, let me unplug this really quick so it stops falling on me. What that looks like is right here, uh, and I can zoom in. I figured out how to do that on Mac. I'm so happy about this. Uh, right, right here, I have a docs folder, downloaded exports, footage, graphics, music, Premiere Pro, sound effects, stills from vi video, and thumbnails. Now, this basic folder structure is going to be completely different dependent upon your um, style and what you're creating, but for the most part, what really helps when you're creating a project is to have a place to start from. And by having all of these folders, every single time I start a new project, anytime I need to go look for graphics or footage in that project, I know that it's going to be in my footage folder or my graphics folder, so on and so forth. So uh, what I do is I have a um, kind of assets folder over here, if you will. And I have a project template folder. So what you were just looking at is exactly this project template folder right here. And I just copy and paste that every single time I start a new project. That way, uh, I have a clear folder structure from project to project. Just a little hint tip to start us off in the beginning. Let's go ahead and open up the premierest of the pros, Premiere Pro. And mine is opening up on the other monitor, so I'll just check the chat while I am waiting. Is this tutorial captioned? That's a good question. I don't know if they do live captions on YouTube, but I that'd be awesome if they did. Hi, Lynette. Hi, the No Shoes Sailors. That's a great name. Hola, Robin. Awesome. Okay, uh, we got Premiere Pro up and running. So if you haven't opened Premiere Pro before, it's your first time, this screen will look a little different, but um, have no fear, we'll walk you through it. Let's go ahead and open up a new project. There's a couple ways to do it. You can go over here. Let me zoom in on it, because I know I, I, I can do that now. Uh, new project. Uh, or you could go to File, New project. And if you already had a previous project that you were working on, it's right here. Now, a common thing that may happen is if you don't see your project right here, the next time you open up Premiere Pro, don't worry. It's still on your computer. This is just your recent projects. Uh, a comment I get a lot of times on my YouTube videos is saying that they lost the uh, project, but it's because it didn't show up in the recent. It's still somewhere on your computer. Premiere Pro is just trying to give you easier access to your most recent 
most recent projects right here. So for this example, what I'm going to do is go up here to new project and click that. That leads us to the new project window, the next runner up in this tutorial. Man, I'm hyped up. I hope you guys are excited. Uh, whoa, going crazy with our zooming in. First up, we got our name, very important, which is very important. Did I spell that correctly? Hopefully so. And the next very important thing is to choose the location of where you're saving your project, which uh, this is probably already preset because I've ran this um, webinar a couple times. And uh, But if you did need to select your location, I'm going to hit Browse. That will bring up this window. Super class. And I'm going to go up to my Adobe Live webinar, uh, basically that same Premiere Pro template folder that I was talking to you about. Uh, I would go in there and then I would go into this Premiere Pro folder. And then uh, as you can see, uh, these are the different examples that I've already saved. But um, I'm going to choose this folder in my folder structure and I can see the location of it right here. There's a couple more things that we could go into, but I think that's a little too advanced for just getting you guys into Premiere Pro and working on some stuff. So we're gonna leave it at that and hit OK. Now, let me zoom out so you can get a full picture. Let me check some comments, make sure we're all good and dandy. No live captions, but they'll appear on the replay. Hey, thanks, Mr. Hatman, love the emoji. Guac. I really want to know how to use Premiere. Well, hopefully hopefully, I will be speaking your language with the guacanese, guacamole. Hi from Arizona. Hello from Texas. That's where, that's where I'm at right now. I've been playing with it, but uh, not very good at it. Looking forward to learning. Me too, Don. Is it possible to zoom in a tad? Trust me, Heidi. We're going to be zooming in a tad. <laughs> uh, all right. Is Premiere Pro or After Effects easier? If you are creating something uh, on, if you're creating a video and let's say it's like a home video or a whole bunch of videos from an iPhone, trust me, utilizing Premiere Pro is much easier. If you are creating motion graphics or animations and, or things like that, you would want to use After Effects or uh, special effects, hence the name After Effects. You would want to use After Effects, but Premiere Pro is basically a tool or mechanism for you to take your footage, chop it up, put it on the timeline and create a combination of clips together and output that into one single video file. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me move on. So here inside Premiere Pro, um, it can look different for anybody as you open it up for the first time or a couple of different times, but there is a way that we can kind of be starting off on the same page. Up here, let me zoom in a tad. Uh, right here, we have assembly, editing, color, effects, graphics. All of these words are um, representations of different workspaces, different styles of workspaces. What I mean by workspace is how your panels are set up inside Premiere Pro. So if I were to go here and click assembly, boom. Now we got some assembly. Or if I were to click editing, this way, the way that the uh, panels are set up right here are best for editing. Um, and a cool thing is if you ever move a panel and say you got it all out of sync and you're like, man, I really wish, I just wish I could get back to how it looked before. Well, guess what? Javier's got your back. All you got to do is two things. You could either go up here to the little editing bar and I could double click that and then, ooh, look at this, confirm workspace reset. Well, turns out you could just reset your workspace to how it is defaulted within Premiere Pro. Super convenient. Um, I'm going to hit yes. Oh, look at that. It just went back to how it was. Trust me, when I first started out in Premiere Pro, one of the things that uh, got to me the most was I accidentally like X'd out the program monitor. And then I was like, I don't, I don't know what the program monitor is called. I don't know what it is. Where did it go? And the best way to recall a workspace and just make sure the windows are how you think they're supposed to appear is, like I said, double click on that editing or uh, whatever workspace you're working in. Or you could go up to Window, Workspaces, Reset, Save Layout. And I'll zoom in on that for you. 
Oh yeah, look at that. Reset save layout. And it's back to the same layout. Let me check those uh, comments, sort stuff on your channel. Yes, I cover that guy, Clay. I do cover a lot of Premiere Pro on my channel. I want to add text bits before certain sections. Yes, uh, I will cover that near the end of this tutorial. I will cover how to add some um, uh, basic titles on your videos. Let's move on to actually bringing footage into Premiere Pro. So, just like I was talking before with this whole, uh, what do you call it, uh, my template, I've already pulled in this footage, and for those that are just arriving to the uh, live stream, I have put the exact links to this footage within the description. If you want to use the same exact footage that I'm using right here, you can download it there. So I'm gonna, there's a couple ways that you can bring footage into Premiere Pro. Um, one of the easiest ways that I've liked to do it is just in the Finder, um, obviously I'm using Mac right here, but I, I'm assuming the same thing is true for Windows. In the Finder, I'm just gonna click and drag my um, footage from the Finder into what is called the Project Window. So click and drag that in and boom, there we go. It's inside Premiere Pro. I'm gonna undo that and show you another way how to do it. And just to get things all crazy up in here, let's go ahead and hit Assembly. So this is a different type of workspace that we were talking about. And with assembly, they're thinking, hey, you really need to be able to see all of the different footage that you want to assemble. So my project window or project panel has been, it, it's, it's a lot huger in this uh, workspace. So I'm gonna go up to file, import. I'm just showcasing to you a different way to add footage to Premiere Pro. Um, I'm gonna go to the, folder where I have my footage. I'm gonna highlight it all and click import. And voila, it just did the same exact thing as when I clicked and dragged the footage into the finder or from the finder. There are a couple other ways to get footage into uh, Premiere Pro, but to speed things up, those are two common ways. Let me check some comments, make sure we're doing all dandy. Does the double trick, man, that's that's a tongue twister. Double click trick work on Windows? I hope so. I, I, I'm i a Mac user, so I, I would think that it would go from both. Uh, Adobe Care already got my back. They're answering you. Will you be discussing or showing us how to set specs to export for social media posting? Why, yes, Kylie, I will. Uh, that will be towards the end. Let me speed up and get back into this so we can get to those certain parts. So I talked to you about importing footage. Let me make sure I am on pace. Yes, all right, so we have our footage inside Premiere Pro. Uh, let me do a qu quick dive into the different panels that you have available to you and basically just how to get footage down onto the timeline. So to make this bigger for you guys, uh, there is a little I don't know, a bar? I don't know what you call this. What do you, what do you call this thing down here? Uh, a slide bar uh, that will take your thumbnails and make them bigger. And for everyone that's watching, I'm going to do that so you can have a better view of these clips. One thing that I want you to notice right off the bat is I'm not clicking anything, but as I hover the mouse over the footage in the project window, my uh, it will preview the file as I hover over the different clips, which is super spazzy fresh. Don't know if that's a term. Gonna keep using it throughout this live stream. Another thing, uh, just to keep talking about the project window is, let me make this a little bit smaller. In terms of organize, organ, organizing, I'm going to right click here, do new item, and, uh, or sorry, I'll do new bin. And I just wanna to showcase to you that uh, just like you can set up folders inside uh, the Finder, inside uh, a Mac, you can also set up bins to kind of organize all of your footage. So I'm gonna create a bin that is labeled footage. I'm going to take all of my footage and drag it into the bin. And now, uh, 
Same thing as a folder structure. As I double clicked on that bin, now I'm just looking at the folder. If I go up here, uh, I will go back to the overarching, basically the highest in the hierarchy of the folder structure. So if I want to go back to my project, I'll click that and I'm back to my project. Next, that's the project um, bin. You can add graphics in here. You can put photos in here, um, audio. Basically, any asset or media that you are adding to your project goes within the project bin and then it is a part of your project. In order to showcase you, to you the other um, panels, let me just double click some footage and bring it into, ah, let's get something fun. This astronaut dancing, he's having a good time. Look at him doing his little jig. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna drag this down on the timeline. I'm gonna explain this later on, but I wanna showcase to you the other panels just so you get an idea of what's going on. The program monitor is right here. I'm going to make the program monitor uh, full screen, and you can do this within Premiere Pro with any panel. I don't have no idea how to. In fact, let me let me transition to a full screener here. Hey guys, it's me in full screen, Javier Mercedes, referring to himself in the third person while looking at a keyboard. How about that? <laughs> hey, I hope this is the tutorial content that you came for in this live stream. Um, what I'm going to do is hit this little tilde key. I don't know if you can even see that. I hope my, uh, there, there we go. It focuses right by the number one. If I hit the tilde key, I think it's called a tilde key. I'm going to hit that and that will make any panel full screen. So let me transition back to Premiere Pro so you guys can see it in action. Boop, boop. All right. So I'm going to highlight my program monitor and hit that tilde key and boom. What? It's full screen. Look at that. So cool. So the program monitor is what the final product is going to be when you export it. Everything that's going through the program monitor, that's basically the video that you're compiling. What you see in the program monitor in real time is just the uh, film or video or movie that you are creating. So that's the, um, I guess, the window that you want to reference when playing back material. Now, some people, when starting out, and some actually myself sometimes too, can get confused the program monitor and the source monitor. So right here is the source monitor. In fact, let me zoom in on that one. Right here is the source monitor. You can't really see it right now because I was looking at the program monitor, but I just want to showcase to you, if I click and drag this source monitor, and put it to any panel on my screen, it will allow me to place it in any of these zones, or I could put it to the left of my program monitor right here. Super neat feature. So I could also bring it over here into where the project monitor was, and I can click and um, it's like, oh no, what happened to it? Well, it's still right there. There's the source monitor. Let me bring it back to the uh, left side of the program monitor, and here's the source monitor. The source monitor, let me bring back my footage. Think of the source monitor as a way to have more manipulation of clips before you bring them down to the timeline. You're sourcing the clips. So if I double click on any clip here in the project mod, or yes, in the project bin right here, it will take it over to the source monitor. What that means is it's just giving you a preview so I can scrub through this and uh, uh, I will show you here in a second how to uh, show you how to set ins and outs so you can bring footage, specific parts of footage down to the timeline. But I'm just trying to describe to you uh, the differences between the source monitor and program monitor. And the big difference is if I go down here to the timeline, the timeline is where you compile all of your clips and build your edit. Right here, you can see that the program monitor is moving around as I scrub through. And uh, the timeline will play all of the footage in your program monitor. A lot of this will make so much more sense when I describe how to use the source monitor, but we're still talking about panels. I hope that's okay with you. Let me zoom in on the type tool, the track select forward tool. 
the Ripple Edit tool. And guess what? This is just your toolbar. So all of these are the different tools. If you're familiar with any other Adobe product, these uh, are the tools that you use to cut footage, um, stretch footage, select footage, type stuff onto the video. All of these different aspects, um, all of these are your tools. And those, the project bin, the source monitor, the program monitor, your timeline, and your tools are basically the big five. Once you have a amazing, an amazing understanding of those bins, or sorry, not bins, but those panels, you will start to get, you can, you can let your creativity fly inside Premiere Pro. But uh, just try and grasp those couple bins and one, or couple panels. And once you do, you'll be off to the races. Let me check some comments. Looks like Adobe Care is taking care of you all in the comments section. Thank you so much. So let me move on to uh, actually selecting footage and bringing it down onto the timeline. Bef actually, before I do, let me talk about sequence settings just as a, um, because when you're creating something, you wanna make sure that your sequences are set up correctly. So I just deleted that timeline that I had um, and this is going to basically start like from scratch. If you brought footage into Premiere Pro, let's say our next step was to create a sequence. There's a couple ways that you can do it. And one of the things that I always recommend if you're new to Premiere Pro is to take whatever footage that you are using, whether it be from a cell phone or something else, and click and drag it either onto the timeline if your timeline is... Um, if your timeline doesn't have any footage there, what will happen is it will automatically create a sequence for you. And the sequence settings will be the same exact settings as that clip, which is super important because uh, if you are unfamiliar with how to set up frame rates and ratios and all those different things and different codecs, just dragging the footage and just having the settings be the same is super streamlined. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z on Mac, or you could hit Control Z on Windows. Another way that you could create a sequence is down here, this little new item icon. Hopefully you can see that on the live stream. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. This little new item icon. So instead of dragging it onto the timeline, I can also click and drag footage directly onto this new item icon and that will create a new sequence as well. For those that want to get kind of specific, let's go up to the bar right here, and I'm going to click on sequence. Uh, no, sorry, not sequence. Let me move over just a little bit. Go to file, new, sequence, and for those of you that kind of just want to start from scratch, or you want to have manipulation of your sequence settings, here is the dialog box where you would do that. Um, I, I will just say, if you're just starting out from Premiere Pro, this can be super intimidating. Uh, some things that you basically can, uh, I guess, that are the most accepted across most mediums, I'll put it that way, is let's say you're uploading to YouTube or you're creating something for Facebook, Vimeo, Instagram, any of those kinds of things. The most, uh, I'm just going to go up to custom here, but the big thing that I want to get across is the time base and the frame size. Uh, if you are in the U.S., I have no idea why we did this. I'm sure if you Google it, they'll probably under, like you'll find the answer. But for some reason, we wanted to make things harder on ourselves. And one of the main frame rates that we do here in the US is 23.976. So if you're watching any kind of movie, if you're watching um, a like anything in cinema is 23.976 frames per second. If you're watching anything in broadcast, that will be 29.97 frames per second. Now, if you're overseas, or basically if you're even in the US sometimes too, that's they just do 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second. I don't know exactly why. 
Um, here in the U.S., we did that. I'm sure there is a completely good reasoning for it. But uh, apparently, I have to take the time to explain that <laughs> there's two different ways that are very similar in terms of your frames per second. Personally, for me, I do 23.976 um, because most of the, the files for my clients and also for myself, I like the aesthetic of how 23.976 how 23.976 looks, which is exactly like uh, 24 frames. It's just off by a decimal point or two. So for that, I'm going to do 23.976. And let me also talk about the frame size. Um, also here, it would be if you're looking at a monitor or any kind of YouTube video, most of the time it's 16 by 9, which is an HD that would be 1920 by 1080. So horizontal, that is 1920 by 1080. One other thing that's just default right now here in Premiere Pro is pixel aspect ratio. I don't know anybody that uses these unless they're doing something in anamorphic. And if you're doing something in anamorphic, you're not going to be looking at a, um, a Premiere Pro 101 tutorial. Do square pixels. And if right when I did that, you should notice that it changed to 16 by 9. For fields, uh, we want to do progressive scan, and the rest of this is pretty good. So if it's your first time ever opening Premiere Pro and you want to make an HD sequence, here are the settings for something that would look more film-like. If you went to, if you were doing something like broadcast, you'd do 27 or 29.97 or 30 frames per second. If you are doing a um, gameplay, if you're um, like a let's play or anything like that. Gameplay is normally at 60 frames per second. So uh, for those kind of videos, you may want to look at doing 60 frames per second. Um, that's as much as I want to explain with that right now, because I know there's a bunch of material to get to. Those are some settings. One more, I ah, mean, one more thing to add to this is if you wanted to do 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Uh, I just know those off the top of my head because I always have to put those resolutions into Premiere Pro. But um, I'm going to keep this at 1920 by 1080 just because I want to uh, do an HD sequence, you know? All right, so hit OK. Now I have created this 1920 by um, 1080 sequence down here. It's blank. There's nothing in it. And you can tell that there's nothing in it because I'm going to hit the tilde key. It's black. Uh, let me check some comments, make sure we're all looking good. Oh, uh, we are all good. How do I color grade? I, I will touch color grading for a little bit later on in the tutorial. Is anyone else cutting out Lynette? Um, I'm not sure. Um, hopefully not. I hope I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a good stream for you guys. Let me keep looking here. Uh, all right. Uh, just let me know in the comments if it is cutting out or not. Uh, it does look I had it looks like on my end I have a excellent connection, but just let me know. Picking up where we left off, we're looking at sequence. We got nothing in there. Let's start building some some footage, yo. So. We got Lady chilling here, doing some dancing in the middle of these people clapping. And it just, she's so happy about her life because she's like, yo, I, get, I just got Premiere Pro, handshake. Oh, let me go, uh, you, you got Premiere Pro too? He's like, yeah, man, cool. <laughs> so what if we wanted to bring this <laughs> footage down to the timeline? Let's do it. Uh, let me introduce to you a little thing called uh, insert and overwrite and your ins and outs, which on the keyboard, ins and outs, the hotkey for them is the key I and the key O for in and out. What do you mean by in and out, Javier? Well, let me, uh, let me tell you. So let's say I wanted to only bring down to the timeline the part where she's pointing at this guy and she's like, you got Premiere Pro and you got Premiere Pro. Everybody's got a Premiere Pro. <laughs> I want to start from right here, and I'm going to start my in. So I'm going to hit I on my keyboard. If you, let me zoom in on that. 
if you notice, it created a little bracket right there, and that's my endpoint. Let me zoom back out. And I'm going to move along my playhead here in the source monitor and maybe end when she's done doing her thumbs up right there. I'm going to hit O on the uh, keyboard, and that's going to set my out point. Now, what I want to do is bring that specific section of this clip down to the timeline and add it to my video. There's two ways that you can do it. The first one, let me zoom in on these. The first one is insert. The second way I'm going to show you is overwrite. So if you notice, let me zoom in a little bit more. If I hit comma on my keyboard, I'm going to insert it. And if I hit period, I'm going to overwrite it. So let me zoom back out so you can see what is going to happen. Look down here on the timeline. Right now, I'm going to hit comma on my keyboard and look what happens. Boom. It puts that specific section of the clip down on the timeline. So it, right here, you can see if I bring my selection tool to the end of this clip, I can now uh, bring more of that clip into uh, view, or I'm going to hit undo on that. Or I could go to the beginning and maybe move the clip over and bring more of the clip back. But for right now, I just brought down that specific section of the clip. Uh, super useful tool. Let's add some more footage to this so I can illustrate to you what uh, overwrite does. Hopefully. <sighs> just making sure we're all good. I can't stop laughing at this. <laughs> you know what's funny is, um, I believe that's pronounced Zena, Zena Williams. Uh, what's funny is that's how, whenever I'm editing, I just like come across moments where I'll just like do a little dance with the people while I'm, I'll, I'll scrub and be like, tss, 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 tss. maybe that's just me. Hopefully that's other people that are editing, but uh, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me add some more footage so we can talk about overriding. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So... If I want to bring another clip over to my source monitor, all I have to do is double click it. So let's say we got this, let's, let's do the astronaut dancing. So I'm going to double click that. <laughs> I love the pose that he's in. I'm going to double click that and it brought it over to my source monitor. Again, I hope you're starting to realize the difference between the source monitor and the program monitor. The program monitor is what's down here on the timeline. The source monitor is just uh, picking and choosing clips. So. I'm going to maybe, apparently the big thing these days is in stock footage to point. So what he's going to do is he's going to point and he's going to point and let's add the parts where he, where he starts to point. So again, let me zoom in. Oh, let me back up just a smidge. Let me zoom into this. And again, I'm going to hit the I key on my keyboard and that made the little bracket scroll through and he points again he's like hey guys hey gals just a guy in an astronaut chilling and now i'm going to uh let me just scroll in so you can see i'm gonna hit the o key to create my out point ins and outs and i'm gonna move my playhead to the end of the clip over here and i'm also going to insert this so i could hit the comma key to insert it but i'm you can also do it by hitting this little icon on the source monitor. So I'm going to do that. So here's insert. If I play this back again on the program monitor, I hit play. She's given her handshake and that immediately cuts to the clip where he's like, man, we're just so happy about pointing. <laughs> uh, after reviewing that, I think I want to add a little bit more to the tail end of that clip. So I'm going to take my selection tool, which is over here. Also, you could hit V on your keyboard to bring up your selection tool. And mine's going to look a little different from yours because I have a different parameter, which, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and make sure that everything that I'm doing is how everything is default inside Premiere Pro. So let me bring up my keyboard shortcuts and make sure that I'm uh, default to what you guys are going to be experiencing. Hit OK. And then... Um, if I go down here, that's what your cursor should look like. So let me zoom in. And if I wanted to add more to that, all I'm doing is clicking and dragging on the clip. Um, and that adds more to the clip. Now, what I want to do is make this a little bit 
a different color so you can see what happens when I overwrite a clip. Label, and all I'm doing is going, I'm, I'm right clicking on the clip and I'm going to label and I'm changing the color or label of it. <clears throat> Next, you know what? Let's say uh, these guys were partying and the astronaut just so happens to show up at that party as well. So uh, we got this guy singing and he's like, whoa, astronaut dude. Let's sing about Premiere Pro and how happy we are about it. <laughs> so uh, same thing. Hopefully you're getting the catch here. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard, set my endpoint, scroll through. He grabs the microphone. He's like, yo, dog, what's up? Premiere Pro. And then I'm going to hit O on the keyboard to set my out point. Again, this has created those brackets. So what I pull down to uh, Premiere Pro will be what's in those brackets. It will not bring down this part of the clip. Another thing to point out is I can bring down either the video or audio. So right here, even if I drag video only, that's what this icon is, drag audio only. So to show you what that looks like, I can drag the video on. I'm going to hit um, Control Z to undo or Command Z, drag just the audio on, and it drags just the audio on. But what I really want to showcase to you is overwrite. So before with insert, here's what insert does. I'm going to hit insert and notice how it shifted the clips. In fact, uh, let me make this much bigger for you all so you can get a front row seat to insert in clips. I'm going to undo that. And again, I'm going to hit insert on the clips and notice how it inserted that section of the party in between the sweet, sweet dancing section <clears throat> of this lady. So it's going to go back to the lady right there. It inserted the clip and shifted those clips to the right. That's different than if I were to go up here and hit overwrite. So I'm going to hit overwrite and this is the same thing as it pasting over the footage. Notice how we no longer have the astronaut dancing outside, and we also lost the tail end of the lady, and she's no longer going to congratulate this dude for having Premiere Pro. It's just going to go straight to our spazzy, fresh party where he's like, yo, because they were just like too excited to get to that footage in this edit. But we could hit Command-Z, and that's overwrite. So the differences between insert are insert it inserts the footage in between the clips and overwrite it overwrites the clips a couple more things to take into consideration with this is uh the v1s over here let me take a ponder minute and just zoom in on that 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 sweet sweet v1 <laughs> a little bit too much zooming so there's a v1 right here and there's a v1 right here if I keep my mouse over that and you read the text, it says source patch. Oh, come back. Source patching for inserts and overwrites. Let's go ahead and talk to you about what would happen if I wanted to maybe insert or overwrite the clip onto track two, but I did not want to overwrite any of this footage down here. So as a, it's better to show you this and then explain it than vice versa. So right here, I'm going to click this V1 over here. So before V1 was on track one, but I'm going to click in this space to the left of the lock, my source patching for inserts and overwrites on V2. And I'm going to back up just so you can see what's going to happen. And I'm going to take that same clip and I'm going to hit insert. So notice what happened is it inserted the video onto track two. The audio went to track one. That's because this A1 over here is still uh, on this audio one track, this source patching. If I wanted it to also go to track two, let me hit undo on that. And I'm going to go to track two right there. And let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, also, for those that are watching, if you want to make these tracks smaller or bigger, you can hold option on Mac or hold alt on Windows and use your scroll wheel. And that makes them smaller or bigger. You can also hold shift and that will make all of them smaller or bigger at the same time as you do the scroll wheel. That's a little tip, little tidbit. You can also use these little we these little um selector things. I don't know what those are, but you can you can click and grab them and it'll make them smaller or bigger. Uh, I can already tell that 
I like explaining things in Premiere Pro. So hopefully you guys are okay with me going a little over in, in this tutorial as I, um, I just like to make sure people understand them. Um, hopefully you guys are cool with that and gals. So I move my source patching again. The A1 was up here on a the track one, but I'm going to move my source patching to track two, and I'm going to hit insert. Now, before, instead of doing on track one with the audio, I've inserted it to uh, track two. If I wanted to go to track three, track three, notice I clicked these two, and now I'm going to hit overwrite. The clips didn't shift because I was overwriting, and the video and audio went to track three and track um, three on the video and audio. Uh, there's a lot that can be done with source patching as well as this other V1 and A1 right here, which is the your toggle track lock. Um, or Sorry, not toggle, toggle track lock. It's your target. It's your toggle targeting. Um, I don't want to, for a beginner tutorial, I don't want to get too specific into this whole thing. I do have a video on my channel called uh, Demystifying the uh, Most Confusing But Integral Part of Premiere Pro, and it breaks down all of the different parameters that you see right here, um, and it gives you a whole bunch of different, a whole, a whole bunch of different um, examples of different scenarios that you can do with your track targeting and also your source patching. But for right now, that's where I kind of want to leave this. I know this part for beginners can get really confusing. Um, one more thing that I would like to add that a lot of people run into when they're first starting off in Premiere Pro, and this also happens to me sometimes too, is if I'm clicking and dragging a file from my project monitor onto the timeline, watch what happens if I click and drag this onto the timeline. It didn't bring the audio with it what some people will say is like Premiere Pro is broken. What happened? Well, it's because your source patching isn't on for your audio. If I click this, now if I do that same thing, I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to do that same thing where I bring in the clip. Boom. I have two, uh, it brought in the audio with it. So if you ever think that Premiere Pro is broken because it's not, it's either not bringing your video or your audio down with the clip, it's because your source patching isn't on for either your video or your audio. Hopefully that answers some questions. Let's go ahead and move on. Let me see what I have on my timeline. Um, I have speed ramping. Well, have we got a treat for you, audience? Audience watching this this tutorial. I sorry, I'm like doing things in in the timeline that I need to explain, but I, I'm just gonna go on to the next thing. Speed ramping. Look at this sweet, sweet clip of this performer blowing fire. So to build on our story, let's say she's like, she's so happy that everybody's got Premiere Pro. And then we're going to go on to like dancers and like this guy's so happy that he's got Premiere Pro. And then the performer is going to come in and just say like, whoa, Premiere Pro is on fire. But let's say we wanted to speed ramp this with like some slow motion and fast motion. So it's like, Sound effects brought to you by Javier Mercedes Incorporated. <laughs> Let's bring this down and do some speed ramping of this sweet clip. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And again, to bring this into the source monitor, all I did was double click that clip and now it's inside my uh, source monitor. So uh, we'll go... Let's say, actually, you know what? I don't want to select any specific part of this clip. Let's work with the whole clip. And to do that, I'm just going to click and drag it from the pro um, from the project monitor over here or the project uh, bin and pull it straight onto my timeline. And just so you don't get confused at the different clips that we're using, I'm going to right click this other clip where they're dancing and I'm going to label it different color just so we can keep things all organized. So that's mango. That you know what? That that seems like a mango kind of clip. So we're gonna go back to this fire breathing clip. And I want to make sure that you guys can see 
this. So let me move my program monitor. One cool thing that you can do is I'm going to take my program monitor and move this to where my source monitor is and watch what happens. Boom. Now, instead of looking at my face, looking at the screen in one third of the clip, you can actually see what's going on. Let me make this a little bit bigger and let's speed ramp this. A couple ways that you can do this. First way, easiest way, highlight the clip, right click. Look at this, look at this right in the menu. Isn't that sweet? Speed and duration, ellipses. Does anybody call it ellipses anymore? I think that's what it's called, the, the dot, dot, dot. It's like suspense. What's it going to do? It's, it's speed slash duration. Well, we're going to click it. And look at that. It brings up a window for speed slash duration. Let me give you a little overview of this. So we can change the percentage of the speed of the clip. If you go above 100%, it's going to go faster. If you go below 100%, it's going to get slower. You have the duration, which is the duration of the clip. So instead of doing it by a percentage, you could also do it by dura duration. So if you wanted the clip to be a specific time, this would be uh, in here. This is hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And these two are linked to each other. So as I move the percentage, notice how the duration changes as well. So I'm going to change that back to 100. Oh. Let me zoom out. We lost you. Another way to bring up the speed is to hit Command R on Mac or Control R on Windows. This is where you could also reverse the clip. You can maintain the audio pitch. So if this clip had audio, as it plays back in slow motion, it will do its best to maintain the pitch, which uh, if you've ever seen anything in fast motion, a lot of times it will turn into chickmunk voices. It'll be like this and everything's like, wow, whoa, cool. I can't move really fast, but hey. <laughs> like that. Uh, what it will do is still be fast, but it will maintain the like audio pitch. This is me trying to do it in real time. And then there's ripple edit shifting trailing clips, which um, will shift the clips as you do a speed, uh, I guess, edit. I don't want to get too far into ripple editing right now. So, and also with time interpolation, I don't want to get into those things because those are a little bit more advanced. Um, just to showcase to you what would happen uh, if I hit play on my keyboard right here by hitting spacebar, the clip itself is already in slow motion. So I actually want to bring this clip up to normal speed. What I'm going to do is go to that clip duration and maybe I'll type in 500. So for all the people in the grandstands, that's 500. Zoom out, hit OK. Notice how this clip got shorter. I'm going to hit play. It's faster, but it's not any faster. It, like it's not, that's still not real speed. So another way that you can adjust the speed is over here in our toolbar. I don't know why I talk like that. Hopefully it's cool with you all. We're going to go to ripple edit tool. And let me just, I, for some reason, I, I'm i going over the top with the zooming in. Last time I didn't have a, a feature to zoom in. So if I'm zooming in too much, just let me know. Probably going to be a little overzealous with it on this one. So right here with our ripple edit tool, <clears throat> what I want to point out is this little triangle in the corner of these tools. What that indicates to you is if you were to take your mouse, just like hover right over it and click and hold on the mouse, now you have other options to you available in the tools. And look at that, right here is our rate stretch tool. And it also tells you that if you were to hit B on your keyboard, you could bring the rate stretch tool up as well. Well, I'm just gonna select it like that. And now if I zoom out, now we have the rate stretch tool. What this tool does is make your clips longer or shorter and it stretches them. So as I move this clip, look at this number, this number right here. Um, if I zoom in a little bit, the number keeps changing. That's the same percentage that I was just showing you right there. So if I want to make this even faster, this is the same clip and I'm going to zoom out so you can all see. Play. Play. Now we're more like real speed. So just to recap, there's speed and duration, which you can right click and speed and duration. And there is the rate stretch tool over here. I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I'm also good, just going to delete this off the timeline and rebring it in so I can showcase to you speed ramping because you know it's that's the that's what all the cool kids are doing nowadays 
first of all, I don't need my audio in this. So in order to delete my audio, what I'm gonna do is hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click just the audio clip with that's linked to this video clip. Then I'm gonna hit delete. Now, uh, we're just working with the video clip. Audio has been deleted from this clip. Let me uh, reposition this a little bit so I can really showcase to you all what we're doing, what we're crack lacking. Again, to zoom in on a track like this, is I'm holding Option and using my scroll wheel to make this bigger. And I'm also just gonna make this, we're just gonna take up the whole space for you all. Okay, so the first thing to speed ramping is right here, this little effects, just like peekaboo effects. If I right click this little effects, I'm going to go to, I zoomed in a little too much. I'm gonna right click, go to time remapping speed. And now we're going to do a little bit more of an advanced technique, which is keyframing. And all keyframing is, is taking the, uh, a parameter on an effect and animating it over time. Meaning that, let's say you wanted to turn down the volume of a clip and you wanted to go from a certain decibel level to another. The way that you would do that is keyframing. You would take a certain part of the line, say, hey, be 100 dB. And then you would take another part of the line at some certain point in time and say be 50 db and the time between those two keyframes would be animated and you'd see like a volume bar going down from 100 to 50. same thing here with speed ramping what we want to do is create keyframes so we can um, speed up and slow down at certain parts of this clip so i'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so i can see what i'm doing just like we were doing with the source monitor a little bit i'm gonna move my uh playhead around in the clip and let's say I want it to be like, like that. So, and I want it to be fast motion, like maybe hit that slow-mo right here. Um, this is where we're gonna create our keyframe. Remember this line is now representing our time remapping. So I'm gonna hold command on Mac or control on Windows and look at what happens with the cursor. It ha gets a little plus sign, I'm gonna click that. Now we have created this little marker up here. Next, I'm going to find the spot where I want it to kind of speed back up again. So we're like, and maybe like right there, we'll go back to normal speed. So I'm going to, again, hold command on Mac, control on Windows, and click right on the line. Now we've created two of these brackets. What I want to showcase to you before really diving into this speed ramping is look what happens when I take the line and I drag down on it. There's a little percentage. If you look down here, it shows you the percentage that you're slowing it down by. The same thing can be said for the opposite. So right now I need to speed the other ends of these clips up because the clip is already in slow motion. So on both of these ends, right here and right here, I need to speed those up. So uh, let's go up to, take me to another place. Yeah, maybe a thousand, a thousand eighty. That seems like what all the kids are doing these days. And then on this side, I'm also gonna do a thousand eighty percent. Again, it's because this clip is already super slow-mo. So I need to get it back up to its normal speed. And then in this section, it's gonna be slow. Now, let's see what happens. What? Isn't that so cool? And then all of a sudden, we can make it look even cooler though. Come on, come on, come with me. Let's take a journey. Let's, let's do a speed ramping journey. We're gonna start up here on the hills, right? And now with those markers, we're gonna take those and move them. Notice what's happening with the clip as I move these markers. Now we're gradually gonna go from fast to slow as opposed to an abrupt fast to slow. And then I'm also gonna do that over here. So I'm gonna move this marker so it goes from, oh, let me undo that. So it goes from fast to slow with a little gradual shift. Um, let me zoom in just a smidge so you can really see, there we go, that's more like it. Now you can really see the gradual shift here, this in the speed. And then also, if I click here in this negative space, it gives you these little handlebars. So now I can create a logarithmic or exponential curve to go from fast 
to slow and back again. So I'm actually going to make it a little bit more. Like I think the slow part was a bit too much. So now, now let's let's take a ponder minute and see what we got. So cool. Notice how it just goes into slow mo for a sec and then wham. I think I think I think we I, I think that's good for the speed ramping on that clip. Let's add it to our our other clips over here. Let me check the comments. Please stop zooming in so much. Okay, I shall. Culture 88. Happy to be here from Vancouver. All right. Nice. Thanks. All right. Cool. So that is speed ramping. I'm going to relabel this clip a different color so it is different from all the other ones that we're bringing in onto the timeline. Let me hit purple. Yeah, it's a different shade of purple than this one, this violet. And speaking of changing colors, let's move on to uh, the, if you wanted to do things to color, different color correcting things within Premiere Pro. Up here is the little color workspace. Uh, I know you said not to zoom in color, culture 88, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's just, it's just right there. <laughs> um, I'm going to click that color. And right here we have the Lumetri panel. If this workspace does not look like yours, remember you can double click the color and it will ask you to reset the workspace. Or you could go up to window, workspaces, reset to save layout. And again, now we're in the color workspace. One thing that I want to do is bring some more footage on to look at. I, I like the zoom. I don't want to start a battle in the comments about the zooming. I'm just a little happy that, that I, I, I didn't know that you could zoom on Mac. But now that I know, I just want to use it all the time. Um, let me go back to my uh, project so I can bring some other footage in. A really cool hotkey for this is Shift-1. So I'm going to hit Shift-1. And now I'm back to my project monitor. And I'm going to double click that. And here we have... Our footage notice that the footage is a little too big so i'm going to go to this right here and now i'm going to bring in this sweet clip because it's nothing better than stock footage of a guy dancing <laughs> looking like with scientists i hope you notice the theme here he's chilling he's pointing it checks off all the boxes of some sweet sweet stock footage let's go ahead and add it to the timeline and let's say let's start from this point i'm gonna hit i Scroll through. I just like his dancing. I'm gonna hit O and insert. And if you notice, I don't see the clip. Well, that's because my source patching inserted it uh, up here, right there. Let me do this guy and move it down. I'm going to only move down the video clip by holding Option and selecting the video clip. And then this is a really cool. Uh, what do you say? Keyboard shortcut. On Mac, it's option up and option down. On Windows, it would be control, uh, no, no, it would be alt up and alt down. So if you have anything selected, if you wanna move it up or down on the timeline, I'm gonna hold option and it moves the clip up or down like that. Use that all the time. The next clip that I wanna bring in, I'm going to right click here and do ripple delete. That shifts everything over. Uh, and I wanna bring in, let's say these people are looking at all the people dancing and they wishing they, they were just wishing that they were dancing but they're just like critiquing it and they're like yeah man sweet dancing like premiere pro <laughs> i didn't know they fist bumped it um let's go ahead and do i and fist bump oh move my playhead over here on the timeline and we'll do insert you know and let's make this just a smidge bigger for you guys now, let's take a ponder minute or a gaze at over here, the Lumetri color. And just so you can see it, let me move this over just a smidge. Is this still my finder? Oh, we don't need that anymore. And this is the Lumetri panel. Again, if you don't see the Lumetri color panel, you could go to window, uh, window, and Lumetri right there. With this clip highlighted, at this point, I'm going to get rid of my source monitor so you don't get confused at, what, at what's going on. Let me 
choose my Lumetri scopes, so it's a different thing. All right, right here in Lumetri color panel is the different parameters. If you are familiar with Lightroom or have ever used Lightroom, this will look very familiar with you to you. I remember when Premiere Pro updated to this and I was so happy because these sliders are something familiar to me. Um, so we have exposure. One of the first thing that I want to point out here is that the clip that I'm editing is highlighted. So if the clip wasn't highlighted, it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to highlight the clip and I can do exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Uh, to undo all of that, I could hit this button right here, this reset effect. Boop. Or let me undo that undo. When you're doing any specific slider, so let's say I did this to my, you wouldn't color grade like this, but I'm, I'm just showing you extremes. When you want to reset a specific slider, just double click on the slider. And I think that's true for any Adobe program. If you double click on a slider, it will uh, reset. Let me get a drink of water really quick. Ah, hope you guys are having fun, as much fun as me. All right, next thing is creative. If you want to add a specific kind of look to this, you could go to this little drop down menu right there. So right here is just a whole bunch of different, uh, think of Instagram. These are just different Instagram filters or Adobe filters or whatever filters that you wanna do. All I'm doing is double clicking this filter and I am setting it to that clip. And from there, I can adjust the intensity of what that is doing. You could add faded film to it. You could sharpen, vibrance. If you've used Instagram a lot, like this is basically like the same kind of sliders and things like that. And just like I showed you before, I'm double clicking all these to restore them back to their defaults. In fact, I'm gonna go back to none right here so we don't have anything on this clip. Shadow and highlight tint, don't really wanna get into. Curves, another one that can be super confusing. If you are familiar with Photoshop, here is your curves. Uh, down here would be your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. If you don't know what this exactly is, don't worry. I, for the people that do know what a curves looks like, this this is where the curves are. Um, again, this one can be super confusing too. One thing that I do want to showcase to you is maybe I'll go back to this clip right here, and let's say we wanted to change the color of their uh, their gloves. And I could go to hue versus hue. So it's going to change the hue or the color of the um, whatever object that I select. I'm going to go to this little color picker, right? Or the eyedropper, whatever you want to call it. Click that. And then I'm also going to click the, um, the gloves. In fact, it made it red. So let me redo it here. So there we go. Now you see it. Boop. And... Oh, it's making it red. I wonder why. Oh, there we go. Uh, what's happening is, I guess it's a little red in the frame. It creates three. Um, it creates three little nodes right here. And as you adjust these, this is what the color that you're adjusting, the actual node that I'm dragging right here. And then as I move to different colors on this line, that's what color you're gonna be switching it to. So let me undo this and back up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So it looked like it was doing it more when I did this one. So notice as I go to down here, it keeps changing it to different hues, so on and so forth. That's hue versus hue. You could do that for specific, um, you could do that for the brightness of colors, the saturation of colors. That's just a little quick overview. I don't want to get too far into it. Uh, if you want to look more into it, look up Curves in Premiere Pro, and that will do a good uh, tutorial on that. Next one is Match, which is really what I wanted to showcase to you in the Lumetri color panel. So let me bring this over just a little bit if I can. All right. Now, what's happening here is the... Um, Let's say I wanted to match the colors between this clip and this clip, uh, something that you would probably do in an edit. And Premiere Pro has made this really easy for you to do by clicking this little button up here. 
Let me zoom in on it. It's comparison view. So if I zoom back out, what's going to happen is I click comparison view and all of a sudden my program monitor has changed into something different. Let me make my program monitor a little bit bigger so you can understand what's going on. This right here is not my source monitor. This is still the program monitor. Um, what's going to go, what's going to happen is this is the reference of what clip that you want to be changing. Let me skedaddle on over here to this. Uh, let's say we want our, this clip's colors to apply to this clip. So this is my reference and I got to this point by moving the playhead here underneath the reference. So I'm going to move it to that clip. And then this is what the current play line, uh, timeline is looking at. The playhead is looking at on the timeline. So because this is my current file, now what I'm going to do is right here is apply match. Hopefully can you, yeah, you can see that. Um, and I'm going to hit apply match and watch what happens to this clip right here. When it changed the colors to match that of this clip. I have no idea the black magic that goes into that. I just think it's really cool that you now have the ability to just do that with the clip, the click of a button. Super cool that it's within Premiere Pro. I'm going to turn that off now. Another feature that many people might want to do is add a vignette. And that's really easy to do. Another thing um, to get out of this comparison view, what I'm going to do here on this wrench and go to, we are in comparison view. We want to go to composite video. And now we're back to the normal program monitor that you're used to seeing. And if I want to add a vignette, you can do that right here. It's really easy. Just do the different parameters and add the vignette however you want to. That's a lot. That I just went over. Let me check some comments, see what we're working with. Is there a way to only have one small moment of a clip be black and white and then return color right after? Yes, that's very easy to do. In fact, I'm not even going to use the Lumetri color to do it because I like doing this effect all the time. Cloud Wolf 07. How's it going, Cloud Wolf? All right, so let's say I wanted to make this point where he points. And then after he's points, black and white. So just when he points, I wanted to turn black and white and then back to color. What we're going to do is use the razor tool that's over here on the toolbar for those. It looks like a razor. You could also hit C on the keyboard. I'm going to click it. And I'm going to create a cut on my clip. Then I'm going to move my playhead. Um, so he points right there. That was the end of, the, of it. So I'm going to make it maybe right here, hit and make, create a cut right there. So with my razor tool, I created two cuts on the clip and I want this part of that to turn black and white. To do that, let's go and take a, take a gander over to our effects window. So I'm going to go window effects, also shift seven. Then we're going to type in black and to do this effect, you have to use the ampersand. I don't even know if people use the word ampersand anymore, but it's it's that thingy. This thingy is the ampersand. So black and white. All I have to do at this point is click and drag that black and white effect onto the clip and boom. What? It's black and white. So now we got some sweet dancing. He's like, what? What? Boom. Yeah, we're back in color. And then the people are like, dude, that was so cool. Let's fist bump. Bam. There we go. What was it, Cloud Wolf? Uh. <laughs> so that's how you would do the black. I'm, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. That was good recommendation. Um, let's move on to audio. So audio is 50% of the video. In order to showcase this, let's move over to our audio workspace. To bring that up, again, I could click over here on audio, or I could go to window, workspaces, audio. And I'm going to reset this layout so it looks exactly like if you were uh, experiencing it for the first time. I'm going to go to reset layout, and boom. Now, again, I'm covering up some of the stuff, but you should be able to see most of it that I want to explain right now. Um, so in order to really get uh, tell you about the audio within Premiere Pro, the first thing that I want to do is record some VO. And let's go ahead and do that. 
it's really easy to record voiceover into um, Premiere Pro. All I have to do is go to an audio track. So right here, I have the audio track. And even if I hover over this, you can see it says voiceover record. But before that, I wanna make sure that the parameters are set up correctly. So I'm gonna right click on my um, mouse. Let me go over here. Oh, I don't wanna add. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, there we go. So I'm in this negative space, I'm gonna right click on my mouse and go to voiceover record settings. Now, um, this is gonna look completely different to, or the source and the input is gonna look different for everybody's computer because everybody's using different microphones and all those types of things. For my source, I wanna use my Rodecaster Pro. That's the audio interface that I'm using. If you're unfamiliar with what an audio interface is, that's how I turn my analog signal that is coming from my mouth right now into uh, digital ones and zeros. An audio interface converts uh, that into digital ones and zeros that a computer can read. So the Rodecaster Pro is what does that for me. And my input is just the left and right. So if you had a interface that also had a bunch of different inputs, this is where you would change that. So I'm going to close. And now that I know that my setup is set up correctly, I'm going to click the little mic button, click that, wait for the countdown, and... Yo, check it out. You like Premiere Pro? Yeah, I do too. And dancing. What? I'm in slow motion. <laughs> so we have that voiceover down here. If you want to hear it, <laughs> I'm going to play it back. And yo, check it out. You like Premiere Pro? Yeah, I do too. And dancing. What? I'm in slow motion. <laughs> Oh man, I love editing. All right, speaking of editing, let's go ahead and just edit out the first part of that where I was like, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm gonna edit out the last part of that and let's chop this up. So I'm gonna go back to my razor tool and I'm gonna cut this right here in between these two phrases. So I'm gonna split the parts that I talked about up here. So I'm gonna move this clip over here and move this clip over here. And there's a reason why I'm doing all of this it's because I want to showcase to you the uh, essential sound panel. And in order to, for you to see this fully, let's go back over to um, my desktop and make sure that I'm not taking any space up. Transition. Boom. I'm gone, but you can still see. Uh, okay. So over here we have edit and browse. So I'm going to cover edit right in here. The way that the essential sound panel works is you tag your files. So there's dialogue, music, sound effects, and ambience. So what I just did was dialogue. So I'm going to highlight these clips and just click dialogue. Now in this uh, window, we can go through and basically any of the simple tasks that you would want to do with audio, you can do within the essential sound panel. You can repair your audio, you can reduce noise, reduce rumble, de-hum, de-s, reduce reverb. You can do dynamics. EQ, uh, if I wanted these clips to make them sound like I was coming over an old radio, here's, I can show that to you. Yeah, I do too, and dancing. So it makes it sound like I'm going over an old radio. Uh, let me undo that. Uh, I could enhance the speech. I could add reverb so you can yeah, see. Yeah, I do too. And dancing. <laughs> I love playing around with effects. I'm going to turn that off. But uh, this is an easy way for you to sh uh, add f audio effects to your clips. The next biggest thing, though, is right here under browse. Look at this. This is a beautiful thing. This is stock music that is available to you within Premiere Pro. Uh, the whole Adobe stock music library, you can search from inside Premiere Pro. Mind blown, such a cool t uh, thing to have within Premiere Pro. So in order to showcase this to you, let's say we got people dancing. So I'm gonna go to moods. I'm gonna go down here and let's say, let, she's looking groovy. Let's, let's call it groovy. Let's go to genres and hey, it's dance. So let's let's keep it dance. And um, you know what? Let's let's stick with those and life of lavish. Gonna there's a couple ways that I could 
bring this into the timeline, but just to showcase to you playing the footage, watch what happens when I hit play right here. What? I'm in slow motion. It will start to play the music to the to your edit, which is super cool. If you want it to be lower in volume, there's a volume button right here, so let me keep playing this. Hopefully you can hear that. Another thing is, uh, notice if I move the playhead here in the music, it moves on the timeline, which is so cool. If I move the playhead over here, it's going to be represented on the music inside the search. So again, like I said, there's a couple ways that you can bring this into Premiere Pro. You could add to project, save to a local folder, or save to library, if you want a closer look at that. Those are the little um, options. But you know what? I, I think it's more intuitive just to click and drag this onto the timeline. And look at that. It literally just clicks and drags it onto the timeline. Now, one thing that I wanted you to notice is up here, it automatically created a bin that is stock audio media. If I switch this over to list view, you'll notice that there's a little shopping cart by it. And once you're done with your project and you want to license this music, you can do so by double clicking the shopping cart and then it will pop up with a little Adobe stock window. Um, I've already licensed this uh, file, but I'll keep using this one. Hopefully, uh, I'll keep using this one so uh, we can sh so I can show you how it works inside Premiere Pro. One of the first things that I want to do is duck the audio. So I want to turn down the audio when these voiceover parts come in. And in order to do that automatically, I'm going to highlight. Uh, actually, the first thing that I need to do is highlight my music and tag it. So I'm going to highlight this music, go up to edit and tag it as music. The next thing is to duck it. I'm going to go to ducking and there's a little checkbox right here. I'm going to click that. And now the different things that you can duck the music against are right here. You could duck it against dialogue, other music clips, sound effects, ambient clips, and just anything does, doesn't have a tag. But what I want to do is duck it against my uh, dialogue. In fact, I want to move these just a little bit farther apart so it really is, illustrates what's going to happen here. So I'm back into the ducking menu, and I... I'm going to explain what sensitivity duck amount and fades does, but I think it's better just to click the generate keyframes and actually show you what it does and then explain it because that does a better example, in my opinion. Um, let me z make this a little bit bigger so we have more real estate that we're working with. Whoop. All right, so with my music clip tagged as music and... Um, audio ducking turned on. I'm going to hit generate keyframes and nothing happened. <clears throat> That's okay. It means I have to change the sensitivity, um, which I can do right here. So I'm going to take my ducking amount down to maybe minus 25. Make my fades a little bit more. Maybe if I take the sensitivity up, is that doing it? Is that doing it for me? Oh, I think I has to accidentally turn these down. Oh, I did. That's why it's not ducking. It's because these files are all um, my dialogue, clear audio type, and all of my volume on my... Uh, I don't know how I did that. Let me turn these up. So right here are the keyframes for my volume, and that the reason why it wasn't ducking is because these were turned down. Hopefully... If I highlight these, click dialog, then click this one, ducking, and generate keyframes. Boom! There we go. That's what we were supposed to happen. Um, so again, the reason why it wasn't ducking, and it was actually doing the right thing, is the volume keyframes right here were all the way down. I don't know when I did that, but um, I'm undoing that. And so uh, by hitting this, hitting generate keyframes, when you adjust the sensitivity, watch what happens. Generate keyframes. Notice how it takes the volume keyframes right here and um, makes them longer or shorter depending on your sensitivity. So if I make the sensitivity all the way up to nine, it uh, gives it more leeway in between the little dialogue clips. But this is just a really cool way to duck your audio, your audio in an automatic way. So let me play this back for you. Yo, 
Oh, check it out. You like Premiere Pro? Yeah, I do too. And dancing. <laughs> oh, man. This is Emmy winning material right here. Uh, I, uh, let me check the comments. Make sure that we are all good. Available for Premiere Pro or can it work uh, with audio imported? Um, I'm not sure culture I, i'm not sure what your question is asking culture 88 um let me bring my face back here is there any other questions here i think i'll move on from there so we talked about that and there is somebody that asked a question about adding a title so let me sh just showcase to you really quick how to add a title Let's say we wanted to add one over this lady dancing, and now I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to graphics, workspace. And in order to, oh, I, I don't see my toolbar, so actually let's go to, let's go to editing. And here, it's a little bit better. So this is my program monitor. And just so you don't get confused with the source monitor, I'll go over here to effects controls. Uh, with the, with my playhead over this clip right here, I'm going to mute this audio so you guys don't keep hearing that as I scrub through. Uh, if you import another audio track, can you do ducking? Yes. Yeah. Basically, this track right here is you can duck to anything that you have tagged. So this is gonna analyze all of those different um, ones. Any clip that you have tagged, you can duck to that clip. Hopefully that answers your question. If you import music for a certain clip, will the ducking work for the imported music or is it just stock music? No, uh, any kind of clip. Richard, uh, basically, whatever you put in here, if you classify this as music, then you will have that ducking feature. Let me bring it back here. You will have this ducking feature. And just to go back to um, Elena, if that's how you pronounce it, I hope it is. Again, right here, you have the options. I'm not covering that, right? To duck against clips, duck against sound effects. You would just have to tag those specific clips. And then all of a sudden, you're ducking against all of those different things. Um, and then Culture 88, I, uh, sorry, I was wondering if the music will go with the visual visual edits automatically. Um, there is a way to set markers inside Premiere Pro and then paste um, clips to those markers a certain way. I don't want to go over that in this tutorial because it's a that's definitely an advanced thing. I wish th that would be cool if there was an automatic uh, way to just bring in music and then all of a sudden your music cuts to it like basically robots would be taking our jobs at that point audio audio is automatically detached in premiere pro right so we, it depends so this music is its own entity with this clip right here we're looking at the orange clip when i click it it highlights both the audio and the video if i wanted to um, detach them from each other I could right click and right here is a thing that's called unlink so I'm going to unlink them and I'm gonna undo that I want you to look at this little V right there that's the little emblem that tells you that it's linked so um, if well I already unlinked them so let me undo there now if I unlink that V goes away so that's how you would unlink clips inside the um or detach clips from each other inside premiere pro that's one way of doing it there is a couple others uh i do want to move on though uh yes I, I hopefully that answers your question christy let's add a title so we're chilling with this girl dancing and we want to add a title the best way to or the easiest way to do that is go over here to the type tool and click that and then on the program monitor anywhere let me make the program monitor a little bit bigger anywhere on the program monitor I can click and all of a sudden I have the availability to type whatever I want so we could be like 
dance <laughs> exclamation point <laughs> definitely feeling super original today uh i'm gonna switch back to an editing view so i can give you a better uh look at or a better scope or at what we're working with here so you can't really see the word dance when it's not highlighted so if i unhighlight this you can't see it at all so we want to change that so i'm going to highlight the word dance and in our effects control window if you don't see it remember you can go to window effects controls also hit shift 5 on your keyboard and right here is a little text layer that was created um, another thing that can that you can see is on my timeline there is a pink clip above the green clip that pink clip is the dance title clip so if i were to go in here and delete it the word dance is now deleted from the timeline if i go and undo that it comes back so i'm going to highlight the word dance i'm going to go over here to the text and uh, hit that little check mark <clears throat> and now we have all of the parameters that you're probably used to seeing in any word document for uh changing your font you can change this to i don't know what are, what are we feeling? How about impact? <laughs> impact. We'll make it a meme. Dance. And then you can also center it. You can make it regular or italics or all those different things. Um, you can add a stroke. So normally with memes, it's a stroke. So we're going to add a stroke. And we want that stroke color to be black. And we want to change the thickness over here with this line. So... Maybe I want to make the actual dance bigger. Dance! <laughs> and uh, let's say I wanted to move the word dance into the center of the frame. Easy way to do this is I'm going to go back to my selection tool or hit V on my keyboard. And I'm going to hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows and drag the word dance into place. So now the word dance is right there. Another thing, other parameters that you can adjust here are you could add a background. So I could add a little background to this. I won't though. And then you could add a drop shadow. I'm so glad that they added this to Premiere Pro. Um, you can change the drop shadow to dark, the angle, all of those different things. I'm going to take that off right there and just leave it dance. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I think, oh, add a transition. So let's say we want to go from dance to our party but we want to add a transition so at this point i'm going to go up to my workspaces and go to graphics and in the essential graphics window loaded into premiere pro are some pre-made uh graphics some of these are ones that i've already put in here myself but like this angled bar wipe is something that you could add to the timeline so let me click and drag this again this is in the essential graphics window if you don't see that go up to window uh, essential graphics and I'm underneath browse there is an edit but I'm underneath browse uh, hopefully oh I'm in the way I'm sorry guys let me move this over again uh, there is browse there's edit that's what I was talking about this is the essential graphics window again I went to window uh, essential graphics and here is all of those things. I'm going to move this angled bar transition onto the timeline. So let me move this over and boop. There we go. Let me zoom in. And here, this clip right here is the graphic. So uh, let me move it into place. And you can see that it does what it's supposed to. Now let me actually get rid of me so you can see transition uh over here in the edit bar we could do a couple different things i could click on this second bar and it gives you the ability to change the color of that swipe so i can make this purple or blue whatever i want to um that looks like that's on the other end so yeah that's where the blue bar is if i want to change the white one so we're going to change this to uh green there we go we've changed that to green and let's say we want to keep the first part red <laughs> amazing colors here <laughs> play and there's that transition from the dance to the astronaut just chillaxing and saying yeah 
Let's party a Premiere Pro. There we go. The next part that I want to go over is um, exporting. So before I do, let me check comments, make sure we're all good. Looks like it. All right. So before I bring back my face, over here where my face used to be is a button called Quick Export. So if you are very new to Premiere Pro and even if um, you want to get material out the door fast and you just, you just want to export your video and you want to show it to the world, over here is a Quick Export um, icon. I'm going to click that. And I hopefully that, yeah. So right here, so I can zoom in on a little bit more. Um, this gives you only a couple options on purpose. The first option is where you're going to be saving it on your computer. The section option is a preset. The rest of it is made up for you from those presets. So if you're, if you wanted to uh, maybe put this to um, YouTube at as an HD or 4K, just do high quality 1080p HD or high quality uh, 2160p 4K, then hit export and it will do everything for you from that point on. That's the easiest way to uh, get an export out the door quickly. Another thing to take into consideration is your in and out points of your footage. So right here, I have this audio clip that continues on for a very long time on the timeline. And if I were to export this, what would happen is it would export the entire project. Let me bring back my visual here. Um, it would in, it would export all of this black part because this audio is right there. So what we want to do is just export the part where we have visuals. So the first thing is maybe I'll just shorten the audio like this. I'll zoom in or I'll, I'll highlight all of these clips. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the question mark key, and that's going to set my in and out points. Much like what we were doing with the source monitor, now we have in and out points on the timeline. It's those same brackets right here and right here. Now, whenever I export, it's going to export what is, what's ever in, within the, uh, those two brackets. So another way to export, and the most common way to do it, is to, to go up to File export media and uh, the most common Kodak uh, let me zoom in this on this so people can see the most common Kodak is format h.264 and if you are going to something like YouTube that's where let me zoom out now that's where you'd want to do YouTube 2160p 4k ultra HD or YouTube 1080p HD if you do any, if you're doing a HD export or a 4K export, just choose one of those. And trust me, the settings that are set for you here in the parameters are more than better for, more than better, are, are the best for uh, you to export and upload to those uh, platforms. So uh, the other thing though, is if you wanted to export something to Instagram, in a vertical format and that's where things will get a little bit different because if you wanted to export this footage in a vertical format to um ig it would have to be like in 9 by 16 not 16 by 9. so in order to do that i'm going to go back to my project window and let me go back to maybe assembly we'll do assembly this time and I want to find my sequence. So this is my sequence right here. If I go to list view, you can tell it's a sequence because of this icon. Another way that you could bring up your sequence is if I were to right click on the sequence itself on the timeline and go to reveal sequence in project, then it will automatically take you to your sequence. Right now, I want to showcase to you a amazing feature called, um, well, let me just right click and show you. Uh, auto reframe to sequence. So right there is auto reframe to sequence. And what we're going to do is now translate this sequence that we just made into a vertical video. So auto reframe to sequence, zoom in on the window. Uh, now, uh, what about a phone? I'm a, uh, never too young for greatness. Um, I'm assuming what you mean is if you're watching vertical or 
horizontal and that's what I'm covering right now. I hope that's it. Uh, so the what we want to do is you could rename your sequence. I'm just going to go with whatever's default up in here. And this is the main thing that you want to look at. If you want a square sequence, which is mainly for Instagram, you would do square one by one. Vertical four by five is the uh, tallest that you can make something and it can show up on the Instagram feed. So that's a little bit taller than one by one. And then there's also vertical nine by 16. This is if you're watching something in vertical video. Think TikTok or Instagram stories or um, Instagram reels. Horizontal six by nine is exactly what we've been looking at this whole time. And then you could do a custom one if you wanted to. But uh, let's say we wanted to do an Instagram post that was vertical four by five. Uh, that Again, that's if you were posting to your feed um, and it would be the most vertical or the tallest that you can make it where it would still show up in the feed that way. So I'm four by five motion tracking. I'm just going to keep default. And then there's two options right here that I don't really want to get into. I just want to showcase this effect. So uh, I'm going to hit create. And now it didn't uh, it didn't do anything to our previous sequence. That sequence is right here. We still have our original sequence, but it did create this amazing sequence 01 uh, four by five. And if you notice, let me make this a little bit bigger. It automatically made our sequence four by five. So if I hit play, uh, the audio is muted right now just because I don't want it to be over while I'm trying to talk. The word dance still shows up somewhat in the middle. We would have to change that a little bit or reposition it. Our transition was right in there. Uh, the astronaut comes in and notice that the camera is moving along with whatever is the subject matter like that astronaut stays in the middle wow that's so cool the uh the lady noticed when she blew the fire it made room or it, it uh it put them right in the middle and it's moving the motion along with the people so it automatically tracks whatever it thinks is the subject matter of the frame and puts in the automatic motion right there like this is a still video like if i were to go back over to this sequence Notice that there's no moving of the camera, but inside Premiere Pro, it automatically knows that, okay, I should start I should start with the performer in the middle, and then as she blows the fire, that looks like it's something that people would want to see. So it moves the camera automatically. So cool that it does that. Um, all right. I see some more comments coming in. I, I want to make sure that I get to the end of this really quick. Uh, it, but... If you did need to change something, so like with this word dance, we, let's say we wanted to move it to the middle, I could highlight the word dance. I'm going to hit shift five on my keyboard to bring up my effects controls, and then I'm going to move the position into the middle. Again, I can also use my selection tool, hold command on Mac or control on Windows, and then uh, as I move it into the center, it will lock to the center like that. Um, and the same things happen here, where if I were to go to File, Export, Media, H.264, and um, again, another good one for this could be YouTube, or uh, let's say if we would have hit YouTube 1080p Full HD, notice that we get black bars on the side, if you can see, hopefully you can see that. The only, to alleviate this and make sure that it's 4x5, all we have to do is scroll down here, and hit match source. So I'm going to click under basic video settings in video. I'm going to hit match source. And that now is the resolution 4x5 ready for Instagram. I can hit export or I can hit Q to send it off to Adobe Media Encoder. Um, and that's that's basically it, everyone. Uh, that's what I have for you right now. Uh, let me look down at the <sighs> comments here. With vertical, how do you fit people full body inside frame? Short a shortcut available. Ooh, um, yes, there is. But like I just said, the the main thing is that it automatically does that for the most part. Um, let's say it didn't do that. Uh, I'm gonna go over here to my auto reframe and hit delete. So it's going to delete the effect of them and. If I, let's say it was something like this, there is a shortcut to make sure your frame takes up the frame and that's right click, 
and go to uh i i know this by hand i i never really right click okay so there's set to frame size so right here is set to frame size boop that will make it so it notice how it made the uh the outside go exactly into the um uh, what's the word i'm looking for this butts up exactly onto the outside so if i do scale to frame size i think it's going to do the same exact thing there um yeah so if you do set to frame size what it will do is it will take the boundaries of whatever the clip is and make sure that it fits the complete clip within the uh your program monitor or whatever the resolution is and then unfortunately there's no like magic bullet other than the automatic way that i just showed you you would have to go over here to scale and then move it manually um but again it's better to at least try auto reframe to sequence so it keeps everything in frame and then if it doesn't you can go in and manually position it like this hopefully that answers your question all right um I know that this went a little over just like last time, but I, I really hope that you guys got what you were looking for. You're excited at, at Premiere Pro as much as I am, and uh, and you learned something in this webinar. I'm at Javier Mercedes X on Instagram and Twitter, and I'm just at Javier Mercedes on YouTube. If you want to look at some more Premiere Pro tutorials uh, and you like my teaching style, I got a bunch on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much to Adobe for letting me do this. Uh, I really hope that you guys learned some stuff. And uh, until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.